हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर राजीव जैन प्रोफेसर ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एट जिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी ग्वालियर टुडे आई शैल स्पीक ऑन स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व इन क्वांटिटेटिव एनालिसिस अंडर द पेपर फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री सो लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ द टुडे लेक्चर इज how to collect a sample means a sample should be a homogeneous sample the representative sample should have the composition of entire material which is given to us for analysis after sampling we, we shall try to dissolve it some substance easily dissolve in a solvent for example if substance is sodium chloride it will easily dissolve in water but if the substance is glass or alloy or ore then it will not dissolve even it, it will not dissolve even in aqua regia then we have to dissolute it we have to decompose it by using different types of fusion mixtures which may be acid acid fluxes or basic fluxes after that we will find a some measurable de device how to measure the substances how to interpret the results then how to convert the uh, signals into measurable uh, signals students the role of analytical chemist or the analysis involves different types of steps what are different types of what are the different steps in qualitative and quantitative analysis if you are given a substance i have given you a substance and i say analyze it from where this idea has come this idea has come from very early times when alchemist and then gradually knowledge of chemistry grow then with that by observing the plants by observing different types of colors in flowers it was our desire it was the desire of scientist of that time to find out why flowers are colored in one color what are the different constituents present there and at that time also plants were used for the treatment of different types of diseases which is the actual component which is responsible for the treatment of that particular disease for example cinchona bark was given earlier at earlier times for the treatment of malaria so then again it was the desire to find out what is the constituent in cinchona bark which treated the malaria so later on it was find out by analytical chemist that it is quinine similarly different types of components in flower in chlorophyll were separated and identified so now we have systematic knowledge of different steps involved first to collect a sample and sample should be homogeneous sample which has all the characteristic of a compound for example if i want to collect an air sample air sample it should have composition from different types of places then we mix it or if i take a sample from water then it should be from different places of the river or water body at different places different sides at at different depths so we may have a representative sample that is called as sampling and the substance which we are going to analyze it is called as analyte these are the te technical terms which you should have in mind that is the sampling and the substance which we are going to analyze is the analyte so how to prepare a solution of the analyte given to us if analyte is given to us it should be in the soluble form it should be in the ionic form in solid we cannot analyze it qualitatively and quantitatively by using classical method in analytical method two types of methods are there first is the classical methods of analysis other is the instrumental methods of analysis in this lecture i am discussing here classical methods of analysis classical methods of analysis 
are we divide into two categories qualitative methods of analysis quantitative methods of analysis in qualitative methods of analysis i only find out the different constituent of the substance as you have done in your earlier classes mixture analysis you used to find out acid radical basic radical if i give you a alloy if you i give you alloy i say find out the component in this alloy you will say you will analyze it qualitatively and you will say it contains copper and silver only this is the qualitative analysis now i say find out the amount of silver and copper present in the in this oil then you will do quantitative analysis so what are the steps involved in quantitative analysis i shall discuss all these steps in this lecture so first step will be naturally as you have seen it will be the preparation of the sample how to prepare is the sample how to dissolve the uh, sample which you have prepared or how to dissolve the analyte containing matrices into a particular solvent or dissociate it or treat it with certain type of fusion mixture it is a very important step so first step is the preparation of the sample by dissolution and dissociation if the analyte constitutes more than about 1% of the sample it is considered a major constituent it is considered minor if it amounts to 0.01 to 1% of the sample finally a substance present to the extent of less than 0.01% it is considered a trace constituent another qualification of quantitative analysis may be based upon the size of the sample available for analysis the subdivisions are not clear cut but merge imperceptibly into one another and are roughly as follows when a sample weighing more than 0.1 gram is available the analysis is called as macro semi micro analysis are performed on samples of perhaps 10 to 100 mg micro analysis deal with the samples weighing from 1 to 10 mg and ultra micro analysis involves samples in the order of a microgram that is uh, less than 1 microgram analytical methodology beginners first learn quantitative analysis and deal with mainly with major constituents of macro samples they seldom perform a complete quantitative analysis of the sample a complete analysis actually consists of five major steps first step involves sampling that is selecting a representative sample of the material to be analyzed and this is very important part of the analysis second is dissolution of the sample third is conversion of the analyte into a form suitable for measurement fourth measurement and fifth calculation and interpretation of the measured results in addition to the steps mentioned above there are other operations that may be required if the sample is a solid it may be necessary to dry it before performing the analysis an accurate measurement of the weight of the sample must be made since quantitative results are usually reported in relative terms for example the number of grams of analyte per 100 gram of sample i shall discuss various steps involved in analysis in my lecture first step in the analysis of the given sample is the sampling beginners rarely encounter the problem of sampling since the samples are given to you are usually homogeneously are given to you are usually homogeneous or nearly so but 
you should know the importance of sampling and should know where to find proper directions when they are confronted with an unfamiliar problem. I shall discuss the sampling of solids, liquids and gases to give a general idea of the nature of the problems involved. Before carrying out an analysis, a chemist attempt to obtain a sample that is representative of all the components and their amounts as contained in the bulk sample. The process involves statistical reasoning in that conclusions will be drawn about the composition of the bulk sample from the analysis of a very small portion of the material solids by taking the example of coal as solid material i shall illustrate methods used for sample preparation of solids the first step in the sampling procedure is to select a large portion of coal called the gross sample which though not homogeneous itself represents the average composition of the entire mass. The size of the sample needed depends on such factors as particle size and homogeneity of the particles. In the case of coal, the gross sample must be about 500 gram if the particles are no, not greater than about half inch. There are many techniques used to obtain the gross sample. If the coal is in motion on a conveyor of some type, a definite fraction may be continuously diverted to give the gross sample. If on the other hand, the coal is being taken out from a car, every 50th coal sample might be placed aside to form the sample. After the sample has been selected, it is ground and crushed and systematically mixed and reduced in size. One method used for reducing the sample of coal involves piling it in a cone with a shovel, flattening the cone and dividing it into four equal parts, two of which are discarded. A mechanical device for subdividing the sample is called a riffle. In the laboratory, Further grinding of the sample may be done with a mortar and pestle. It is often necessary to grind a sample to pass through a sieve of a certain mesh size. One hopes that the final laboratory sample, one gram or so, is representative of the gross sample. The analytical data obtained cannot be better than the care exercised in the sampling procedure. Liquids. If the liquid to be analyzed is homogeneous, the sampling procedure is straightforward. The process is much more difficult if the liquid is heterogeneous. In the case of a liquid circulating in, for example, a pipe system, samples are often taken from different points in the system. In a lake or river, samples may, may be taken at different locations and at different depths. In testing the natural purification of a river contaminated with sewage, samples may be taken at a number of places downstream from the sewer outlet. Devices called grave samplers may be used to collect samples from large bodies of water at various depths. Such a device consists of a sample bottle inside a metal container sufficiently heavy to force the empty bottle to the desired depth. The sample bottle is closed by a stopper which has a line attached to it and held by the person taking the sample. The device is lowered to the desired path, the stopper is pulled out and the sample bottle is filled. The sampler should have a ball flowed which automatically seals the bottle when it is filled. Gases. There is a much interest today in sampling the atmosphere 
because of efforts directed towards improvement of the quality of the air we breathe. Air, of course, a complex mixture which contains particulate matter as well as numerous gaseous compounds. Its composition depends on a number of factors such as location, temperature, wind and rain. In the collection of an atmospheric sample, for analysis, the volume taken and the rate and duration of sampling are important factors. The air is passed through a series of fine filters to isolate particulate matter and through a column of a solution where a chemical reaction occurs to trap the desired component. After collection on a filter, particulate matter may be determined by chemical analysis or by weighing. Many of these samples you have analyzed so far are soluble in butter. But for the analysis of naturally occurring materials such as ores, metallic products, alloys, etc., special treatments are needed for sample preparation. So, for preparation of a solution of a given analyte, different types of procedures are there. But analyte present different types of problems. For example, if I am going to analyze or if I ask you to analyze to find out this amount of iron present in apple, then this is a different how to prepare the solution of that apple, what steps are involved in that. If I give you alloy, if I give you ore or if I give you glass, to find out different types of material present in silica, different types of substance present in glass, or I give you varnish, paint, wine, cosmetics, then you have to adopt different types of procedure for preparing the sample because analyte is present in different matrices. Iron is the same. Analysis of iron is very simple by qualitative and quantitative analysis. But once you extract the iron from the apple by using different types of procedures that is an important thing so in any analysis the analysis of that material remain the same which you have uh, uh, which you have learned in your earlier classes but here you have to learn how to uh, extract that material means if you are analyzing iron in apple then how to how to consume or how to treat carbohydrate present there and how to take out iron from there, how to prepare the sample of iron. That is my aim here to explain you how to take out the given substance from the glass. If some uh, antimony is present in glass, gold is present in glass, how to find out its concentration from glass because to find out qualitative and quantitatively antimony and gold is a simple thing but how to extract from the glass it is an important thing and to understand properly. The solvent action of acids depends upon several factors. One of the factors is the reduction of hydrogen ion by metals more active than hydrogen. For example, when zinc metal is dissolved in hydrochloric acid it gives zinc ions and hydrogen gases evolved. Whereas the combination of hydrogen ion with anion of a weak acid, for example, reaction of calcium carbonate with acid gives calcium ions and carbon dioxide gases evolved. Similarly, the oxidizing properties of the anion of the acid are utilized for the evolution of gas of nitrogen oxide when copper metal reacts with nitric acid it gives copper ions and nitric oxide gases evolved. Hydrochloric acid and nitric acid are most commonly used to dissolve samples. The chloride ion is not an oxidizing agent as is nitrate ion but it has a strong tendency to form a soluble complexes with many elements. A powerful solvent, aqua regia, is obtained by mixing these two acids. Many substances 
that are resistant to attack by water or acids are more soluble after fusion with an appropriate flux basic fluxes such as sodium carbonate are used to attack acidic materials such as silicates acidic fluxes such as potassium hydrogen sulfate are used with basic materials such as iron ores oxidizing or reducing substances can also be used in certain cases sodium peroxide for example is often used as a flux the conversion of the analyte to a measurable form before a physical or chemical measurement is made to determine the analyte in a solution of the sample it is necessary to solve the problem of interferences suppose for example by adding potassium iodide and titrating the liberated iodine with sodium thiosulfate if the solution also contains iron 3 ion this ion will interfere since it also oxidizes iodide to iodine the interference can be prevented by adding sodium fluoride to the solution converting iron 3 into the stable complex iron fluoride 3 an ion this is an illustration of a gen- general method in which interferences are effectively immobilized by alteration of the chemical nature a second method involves physical separation of the analyte from the interferences suppose that one wishes to determine magnesium in a sample which also contains iron 3 ion in such cases the magnesium is to be precipitated as the oxalate the iron will interfere since it also forms a precipitate with oxalate the iron can be precipitated as the hydroxide using ammonia at a ph of about 6.5 the magnesium is not precipitated at this ph and hence the interference is removed in gravimetric analysis the analyte is physically separated from all other components of the sample as well as from the solvent for example the chloride in a sample may be determined by precipitation of silver chloride which is then filtered dried and weighed precipitation is one of the more widely used techniques for separating the analyte from interferences other important methods include electrolysis solvent extraction chromatography and volatilization measurements the measurement step in an analysis can be carried out by chemical physical or biological means the laboratory techniques employed has led to the classification of quantitative methods into the subdivisions tritimetric that is volumetric gravimetric and instrumental methods of analysis a tritimetric analysis involves measurement of the volume of a solution of known concentration which is required to react with the analyte volumetric titrations or tritimetric analysis are of four types it may be acid based titrations it may be redox titrations it may be precipitation titration or it may be complexometric titration in each type of titration a different types of interpretation and different types of calculations are required for example in complex titrations complexometric titrations for finding out calcium and magnesium it is titrated with edta using di- different types of reaction here because it is a complexometric titration the value of coordination number of calcium involved and edta form which is taken in the form of di- disodium salt is taken similarly in acid based titration it is the it is based upon stoichiometry total stoichiometry of acid and base is taken and 
it is calculated by a very well known formula which you have studied in your earlier classes that is n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 if we take other types of titration also which require indicators the indicator indicate the end point of the reaction that that at that particular point reaction is complete and that that is known as equivalence point in a gravimetric method the measurement is one of weight the term instrumental analysis is used rather loosely it originally referred to the use of a special instrument in the measurement step actually instruments may be used in a, in any or all steps of the analysis a spectroscopy both absorption and emission is perhaps the most widely used instrumental method other instrumental methods include potentiometry holography coulometry conductometry polarimetry refractometry and mass spectrometry calculation and interpretation of the measurements the final step in an analysis is calculation of the percentage of analyte in the sample the principles involved in such calculations are normally straightforward for example titrimetric and gravimetric methods are based on the simple stoichiometric relationships of chemical reactions in spectrophotometric methods the property measured absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration of the analyte in the solution on the other hand interpretation of the results obtained by analytical methods is not always simple it is a process it is a method which comes with experience and practice since errors can be made in any measurement the analytical chemist must consider this possibility in interpreting the results the methods of statistics should be applied and are especially useful in expressing the significance of analytical data so in this lecture so far i have discussed with you learned with you the different steps involved in the quantitative analysis and in the end i will emphasize that interpretation is very important thing how to interpret the results how to interpret the result that come by experience when you do regularly experiments in your lab you do different types of analysis you do different types of solution preparation you do different types of uh, materials you get from your teacher then you get some results then to how to interpret results if you are getting results which are not accurate or your teacher says that the results are not accurate then you have to find out why these results are not accurate what is the problem what are the disturbances there then re by repeating the experiments every time you get expertise and you may be a very good analytical chemist thank you